Well, I finally did it. I broke the Subaru. Last weekend I was up at the uh, Keweenaw Overland Adventure Retreat in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan doing some trails and suddenly I developed this really nasty, clunky, grating metal on metal sound. Couldn't find it while I was up there, but it turns out I broke a spring. Now these are the Rallytech 1 inch lift springs that I installed back in January of 2020. So that means they've got about 3 years, 8 months and about 35 to 36,000 miles on them. Now yeah, they probably should be lasting a little longer than that, but truth be told I did beat the crap out of these quite a bit. From Wisconsin to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan to Colorado and Utah and so forth, rooftop tent and, and so on, uh, they took a lot of beating. Anyway, I contacted Rallytech and to their credit, they offered a zero hassle warranty claim. I emailed them with a picture of the thing saying that, hey, it broke, and then same day they emailed me back saying, wow, sorry to hear that, we'll send you a replacement right away. But rather than just replace the one spring, what I decided to do is order a replacement set of springs, the one inch overload springs this time, this time mounted over a set of uh, Bilstein struts. So what Rallytech allowed me to do is they allowed me to place that order and they simply applied a credit in the value of the one spring that they were going to warranty to the order and it should be coming this week. Until then, let's get these old struts off and get ready for the new ones to arrive. <laughs> You can see here where the spring broke, right close to the perch, so it made all sorts of racket when I was on a trail, but when I was on blacktop and the suspension wasn't moving that much, it was actually pretty quiet. So much so that I actually drove this thing home 450 miles without an issue. But now that I know what it is, I'm looking to fix this thing as soon as possible. The bottom of the strut is held in place by this one bolt nut, so we're going to pull that off, we're going to take this off and loosen this pivot point so we can just basically swing the whole lower control arm down to remove the strut. As you can see the struts just hanging free with the lower control arm out of the way. Now we just got to get the two nuts off the top and it'll drop right out. The top of the strut assembly you access from inside the hatch. It's underneath here. Just pull this part off and you'll have access to these two bolts. <clears throat> and that's all there is to it. Now we just repeat on the other side. Okay, and now we wait for our parts to come in. All right, these things look great. Nice to have a set of new parts. So now, just gonna prep these by placing the spacer that came with my LP Aventure lift kit on top of these before installing them in the car. But those are kind of rusty, so hopefully they'll come off all right. Cheetah bar. If you don't have one, every shop needs one. Mine just happens to be from the ass end of a conduit bender that I broke, but hey, why well, throw away a perfectly good steel tube, right? First we're going to hit this thing up with some rust converter. I like Rust-Oleum's Rust Reformer. And then once that dries, we're going to seal it up with some Krylon Rust Tough Enamel.
Sorry camera, I totally ran you over. Well, it's good to get the Subi back on the road again, and I'll tell you what, these struts feel pretty darn good. They're definitely a little stiffer than my last setup, which was the one inch Rallytech lift springs over OEM struts. Now I've got the one inch lift overload Rallytech springs on Bilstein struts, and um, yeah, stiffer but nice. The car already exhibits less body roll and sway in the ass end. Uh, if you may recall, if you've seen my video, I don't have a sway bar in the rear anymore. So I've always had a little bit of body roll. This uh, setup seems to mitigate that a bit. Despite being stiffer than my last setup, it actually handles bumps pretty well. Yeah, tight turns definitely handles uh, turns better. All right, there are absolutely zero dirt trails near me, so I can't really test it out that way. But I do have a couple of uh, bumpy train track railroad crossings in an industrial area near me. So I know how the last suspension setup felt going over those at speed. Let's see how this one feels. Here we go. Woo, little bumpy, but actually good, stiffer. But that, th that thing handled it a lot better than my last setup. Okay, right there I think is where this setup is vastly superior to my previous one. And if this thing performs that well just going over some uh, bumpy train tracks, then I absolutely cannot wait to get them out back on a trail. Kind of makes me wish I would have gone with this setup in the first place. It definitely makes me look forward to getting a set of these on the front. Anyway, I gotta drive now. Let's do a recap back in the shop. Okay, recapping. We had a busted spring that we replaced. The spring that I replaced was from Rallytech. It was their one inch lift spring. Bought it about four years ago and 36,000 miles ago. Now, a couple of you might be wondering, hey, if it's only that old, why the hell is it so rusty? I had a couple of friends ask me that question, and the truth is, I don't know. I haven't tested out other manufacturers' springs and can't tell you whether or not this type of wear and tear on the powder coat is normal or, you know, subpar. I can say, though, that the powder coating on my Rallytech ditch light mounts has left me a little bit underwhelmed. These are the same age as the springs I've got, and within the first year, this powder coat also started to flake off, especially around the hard edges and corners. Now, I'm not dissing Rallytech, I'm just sharing with you my experiences so far. I do want to say, though, Rallytech's customer service has been exemplary. It's arguable whether or not this should have broken, but the fact that it did, and when I reached out to them, they had no qualms with re immediately sending over a replacement. Now, I misspoke earlier. They weren't just going to send me a replacement spring. They were going to send me a replacement set. The customer service rep was cool enough. We exchanged emails back and forth, and ultimately I ended up going with a new set of springs and struts, as you saw in the install. So, Rallytech, if you're watching, great job with the customer service. Do please keep that up. I would also like to extend my thanks to Orbis Overlanding, a Rallytech dealer, by the way. Uh, their owner encouraged me to reach out to Rallytech to submit a warranty claim or just see what they would do. And because of that, hey, I got some good parts. So overall, I'm very happy with my new spring and strut setup, and I'm looking forward to ordering a set for the front in the near future. But before spending money on that, turns out I have to replace my rear brakes. While I was doing this project, I noticed that my rear brake pads were pretty much toast, and the rotor is not far behind it. So I recently ordered a set of pads and rotors, and those should be coming about next week. There's never a dull moment when you like to tinker with your cars, is there? Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, make a comment below. Until the next time, this is Tom the Dilettante saying thanks for watching, keep on tinkering, and keep on learning. Have a good one.